day folks here's a rodent coil specifically a starship variant of it i have decided to use it as an oscillator so i've turned it into an oscillator very simple by using a um just a transistor like a flyback i uh, sorry a jewel teeth so two parts literally a resistor and a transistor so i set my windings typical feedback setup so uh, where the so i took like for example here one of the wires it's put together so it's like using uh, a um, center tap on a primary transformer essentially so very simple design going into here now the thing is is very interesting as i started running i wanted to build this device that uses as little current as possible so i started using high bias transistors uh resistor values on the base so that the transistor uses the less current to sustain oscillations so I was testing with a 1.5 battery and this thing was easily putting out like over 30 volts on some of the spare windings here. So I decided to put diode plugs on there, AV plugs, and it worked well. It gets about 4 or 5 volts. So what's nice about that is you don't short the loop when you tap off the um, diode plugs. But for uh, measuring, I'd like to um, take it off of one of the windings, which show me about 30 volts. So I said, okay, if it's working that great, I decided to check for the inductive kickback. You know, like Bedini would do to capture the spike. So I had the scope here and I was measuring the spike. And I noticed with this design... It pretty well nullifies most of the spike. I was getting less than 2 volts on the back EMF or the inductive kickback side. So I figured maybe as little as it is, I'll try and recycle it. You know how I went in a Bedini on the diode kickback side, it can short back and it speeds up essentially. So recycling its own. And when I did that, the voltage went down to like 20 volts on here. So it actually made it worse. So I just left it alone. So fascinated by that, I figured, you know, maybe that offers much less drag because the inductive kickback is so minimal. And I've wanted to always run my peg cells directly with oscillators. And I always have a hard time because just the transistor loading itself doesn't uh, allow it to work because there's just not enough um, current to push it so i said you know what maybe this design will make a difference so here's my peg cell and sure enough just like that it didn't want to run but what i did is on the um, negative side of the peg cell i got one wire because remember in an earlier video i put an extra winding around here going into the center it's basically not doing anything but when i connect it here it adds capacitance and the oscillator starts running so to prove to you that it's not like the scope or anything feeding energy i disconnected the scope so i got a radio here just so you can hear the noise because it spits spurious on am so as you hear it's just noise and like frequency here. so as soon as i put this wire and i touch the core it goes quiet because we have a carrier so now we're generating RF so my assumption is the um, system is adding the right capacitance by doing that and interacting directly so essentially the peg cell is tuned with the oscillator in such a basic setup so the whole thing is resonant and it works that way so I'm going to plug in the scope to show you the waveform because I wanted to show you it wasn't leaking from the scope because people will say ah it's coming from the scope so there's that beautiful sine wave so as soon as I I disconnected it nothing and as you hear the noise on the radio no field put this back and all this is doing is capacitance to the core put it back there's that beautiful sine wave. Now what's nice about this is this peg cell is over six months old. I haven't had to provide a penny of energy into this to make it work. And thanks to the rodent coil design, it can now self-sustain its own AC oscillations. In other words, I'm now getting an RF field for free that I can interact with with nearby coils and antennas and diode plugs. It's kind of senseless to feed the cell in the feedback loop because the cell will not run out. It basically regages itself. 
But what's a smart thing to do is use these to charge capacitors or other things, passive or, or direct. So this has wireless applications as well. So you can modulate this and give information out. My wire is a little loose here. But yeah, so I can modulate. So the thing is what I'm getting at is what I'm getting at is in ham radio, folks, depending on the bands, you only need a few milliwatts to get halfway around the world, especially in QRP mode. So now, what I'm getting at is for home usage on FM, like at 100 megahertz, you only need about 18 nanowatts of RF power to get a range on a typical radio like this of around 300 feet. So even internally for remote controlling applications, especially in the LoRa when round with the remote sensors and all that this is a it's a prototype it's kind of ugly of course but my point is this system can generate RF which can charge micro devices wirelessly like wireless sensors and transceivers that don't depend on solar or wind or anything essentially a wireless sensor that's completely self-powered so it has applications even for emergency communications if one were to hook up a modulation system to this we could modulate this field so it holds no problem so i am very happy and we get a very strong field here 50 d beater and i'm not even on frequency i can tune this and find the the right and this is just harmonics but notice how it's basically the whole AM band. This is a lot of RF. I could just make multiple sensors tuned to different frequencies and it's its own sink of energy essentially because this rodent coil is putting out a very wide band signal here. So we're getting the fundamental frequency off the scope but what I'm getting at is, by design, it's spinning out basically infinite, or basically, these tend to drift a lot, so it's just a matter of, I'm just using it as a sensor, What you saw earlier, as I was saying, it was a pretty wide band thing, and it's still working here, just I don't want to bore you folks so I turned it off now but all this is is just a capacitance because the other side here is disconnected and it's connected to the negative side of my peg cell and that's what starts it up and as I said it did emit us it does emit a strong field because it, it basically puts my radio meter right to the top So that's all it is. So I'm very happy with this because now the peg cell is emitting a real RF field and it's self regaging itself. And who knows what it's doing because now it's also oscillating as part of the capacitive circuit. So there might be some interesting, maybe even um, electric like effects with the peg cell. So I should monitor this with time. But I love that sine wave. Isn't it like perfect? You know, usually these oscillators tend if they're a little bit off, you know, you get one side a little bit less or very sharp. This is very nice. And it's really this. See, as soon as I take it off, no more. And then radio also went quiet. So we were listening to some of those harmonics. So I just wanted to post the progress and try and basically the finding is these rodent coils allow for the um, system to uh, self oscillate with very little input and you don't get the typical inductive kickbacks that you would with it so maybe that i guess it is a bonus so with that said folks i'll leave that there for now and i hope you enjoyed this video